Okay, so we have completed the, our uh, application code in the previous video. Now we will test it on the hardware. So while testing it on the hardware, uh, I'm going to do the run. Uh, run configuration. In the run configuration, I make sure that I'll program the PJ as well as reset the system. So I'll do the run. So let's see whether the code is correct or not. Okay, so you can see that the that there is an issue, data mismatch has happened. So your output of the FPJ is not correct. So we need to figure it out why it is not correct. So the only option for us is to uh, look at the DMA as well as look at the corresponding, uh, the ILA output or the debugger output. So let's figure it out. Okay, so how to figure it out? So that's a problem. So we have already added the ILA in our code. So we'll go to the open hardware manager here. Okay, so let's see open target, open program device or refresh device. So yeah, so once you do this one in our, your remote hard desktop also, it's the same process is there. You don't need to change anything. Okay, so you can see that uh, we have given some of the uh, links which we want to observe are here. So you can see that this is the output of the FFT and this is the input of the FFT. So we'll check whether the input to the FFT is correct or not. So what we will do is that we will put the trigger. So you can see that the input to the FFT is a stream interface. So you have the valid, ready, data and last. So we'll put the trigger on the last signal. And when the last signal goes to one, our debugger, which is there inside the chip, will capture the data around that trigger and send it to the Vivado tool, and we'll be able to display those data here. So uh, let's put the trigger here. So once you put the click on the plus one, you will see all the signals where you can put the trigger. So I want to put the trigger on the MAXIS which is the DMA output and the last signal. So you can see I'll put the here. I'll include it here. Then I'll make the trigger on zero to one transistor transition. And then I'll uh, click on the run trigger for this ILA. Okay. So this is what I want to do it. And here I'll run it in the debugger mode. Okay. Uh, so I'll go to the uh, code here. I'll do the debug as in my case, I want to do the launch, uh, launch on hardware system debugger. In case of your remote hardware, you do the launch on uh, debugger. So I'll do this launch on system debugger. You can see that when I do the debugger here, I uh, the you can see that my code has stopped at the first line. I'll go to here, I'll my uh, run it uh, here so that my uh, the here debugger waits for the trigger and then I'll execute the code, okay? So what I'll do is that I'll execute the code uh, till which point should I execute, okay? So let's me execute the code at this point where the DMA has completed the operation. Here you can see the trigger has happened. Okay, you can see that the, I have got a lot of data and I can now focus on the the data which is being passed to the FPJ, which is being passed to the FFT. And let's look at this data. You can see that the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight data has been passed to the FFT. And now if you see here, again, this I'm giving you the information uh, in advance. If you see here, my FFT input, ideally should have been this one, which is the hex file. It should be like this, looks like this, but the input which is being passed to the FFT, which is MM to AS, is something different. And why this has happened? So um, now let, let's look at this address. What is the data is being stored at this address? Okay, this address data. Okay, this data is correct. Here also this address is correct. So that means this data address is correct. But the problem is that this address, this variable corresponds to the data in the cache memory. And our DMA is reading the data from the system memory. 
okay so that means our dme is reading the data from the wrong location okay so that's that's the reason why we are not getting the correct uh, data so now to avoid this one okay we will look into the ila in more detail but to avoid this condition what we need to do we need to we need to take care of the cache flush okay so the issue is that the data which is being passed or data from where the dma is picking up the data is taking it from the system memory but this data is in the cache so now we need to do something so that the data from the cache goes to the system memory so that the dma picks up the data correctly okay so what we need to do here before the dma picks up the data we need to use the cache flush function so this is a very common function in the embedded system where we need to uh, flush the data before we uh, before we uh, before we uh, communicate to any hardware function okay so that cache flush function we need to okay so uh, this is the cache flush function so we need to make sure that this cache flush function we provide the data and the how much amount of data to this cache flush function okay we'll look into more details in the theory part but this is what we need to do now after we add this one let's verify that whether our code is working properly or not the first thing is to make our code work before going into the details okay so let's go to the run uh, run configuration okay so i'll choose the run configuration no sorry run configuration i'll reset the pj program it okay Okay, run. Okay, you can see that the now the functionality is correct because the data which is sent to the APJ is correct. Now let's verify it in the our uh, debugger. So what we will do is that uh, again we will put the trigger on the debugger. But again, here since uh, I am, pro what I'll do is this time I won't program the FPGA, so my trigger will remain the valid. Okay, because once I program the FPGA, I need to put the trigger again. So what I'll do is that launch on the run configuration, but I won't include the program FPGA. Apply, and then run. So my. You can see that uh, I'm waiting for the trigger inside here. My data is being executed. Okay. So what has happened? Something has happened. So we need to go back and check what has happened. So I think uh, I have to uh, make sure that I program the FPGA again. So give Okay, so I need to make sure that I run it by following the, all the steps. So let's go at debug, uh, then launch on the hardware for me. So yes, yes. Okay, so now I'm at the first line, then I'll make the trigger on. And then I'll run the trigger here, I run the code here. So code is completed. My code is completed, verify successfully. I got the trigger here. And now you can see that this data matches with the data which we're trying to set. So by using this cache flush function, you can see that you take care of the data coherency between the main memory and the system memory. Okay. So this completes the discussion on the FFT. Now in the next uh, video, we will discuss the debugging in more detail.